You are welcome to Africa Uncovered YouTube channel. My name is DJ and today we're going to be discussing something that we've wanted to discuss for a long period of time and we were looking for the right moment, the right timing for it to be discussed. And we're going to look at, is General Mohose Kainerugaba the Kagame Uganda needs to develop? Yes, is General Mohose Kainerugaba the Kagame Uganda needs to develop? That's what we're going to be discussing today and here we roll. Now, when we talk about military leaders that have shaped the future of their nations, there are two names that come to your mind. Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, and General Mohoska Nerugaba, no doubt the son of Uganda's long-standing president, Yoel Kaguta Museveni. Both of these men have deep military roots and their influence extends beyond the battlefield. But the question today is, could Mohos be the Kagame that Uganda needs to achieve true development? Is his leadership style much like Kagame's, what Uganda requires to rise to new heights? Even if someone sees this style as dictatorial, we're trying to, you know, to dive deep into such. Is his leadership style much alike that of Kagame? What you, is, is it what really Uganda requires for it to achieve its true development beyond President Yoweri Kabutam 7? Now, in this video, we will, explore the, we will explore the military background, the leadership strategies, and the way how these two handle national matters. Both Kagame and Mohoz come from a military family, or from military families, and have grown to command the respect of soldiers and civilians alike. Paul Kagame's journey, you know, roots back particularly uh, as a refugee from Uganda, then he helped the Rwanda Patriotic Front, you can call it the RPF, to overthrow the Hutu-led government, putting an end to the Rwanda genocide. Those who remember the 1994 genocide story. Now, his military precision, strategy, intelligence, and so many other factors have shaped Rwanda into one of the safest and fastest growing economies in Africa. Mohoska in Nerugaba, on the other hand, has been groomed with the Ugandan military structures under the guidance of his father, General Yoweri Kaguta Seven. He has attended so many prominent military schools and he has been engaged in different diplomatic, you know, ventures. We, you, those who remember very well, he was in between the standoff between the government of Uganda and Rwanda, which had lasted for about two years. You remember when the border between Uganda and Rwanda was closed and it took the leadership of uh, General Mohozka in Rugaba to, you know, go to Rwanda and negotiate, you know, um, ceasefire, negotiate the end to the standoff. So he's been also very, very pivotal in the political policies of this country to the point that was actually when he was, he was uh, not yet the CDF to the point now that he's the CDF and also partly given powers of the CIC, the chief in command. Uh, of the Uganda People's Defense Forces. So, uh, these are two important uh, people that we're juxtaposing and then asking ourselves if this blueprint of Rwanda uh, under the stewardship of Paul Kagame can be replicated in Uganda through the leadership of General Mohoska in Nerugaba. Now, we all know that the style of leadership of Paul Kagame is most notably someone who is pro-development uh, with an expounded knowledge of leadership but also military rule. Ever since General Mohoska Nerugaba became the CDF of UPDF, we've seen different things that he's been able to do. One, he went ahead to uh, improve on the salary scale of all the soldiers. There were soldiers that were really, really earning peanuts. And this was actually starting to raise questions in different angles. And you know, sometimes when these things are in the public uh, space and are being discussed, in most instances, they've been, you know, communicated to them. They've been grievances have been raised from the soldiers to them. So there was that problem that most of the soldiers, oh, they, literally the army was earning very little compared to what they were doing. And when uh, Mohoz took over 
uh, the leadership, being the CDF from General Mbadi, we saw him raise uh, the basic salary of a soldier from whatever it was, approximately 450,000 to minimum 1 million. And, you know, as you grow in the ranks, you get better and better and better remunerations in terms of your salary. So he was able, he, he, he garnered a lot of support and respect from the soldiers who felt that they were earning peanuts from the government and therefore it was able to swing a lot of them towards you know love and respect for general mohoskai nerubaba now that does not only mean that he gets the love from just increasing their salary when you speak to most of them his leadership style is kind of calm and composed and he leads from the front not from the back someone who wants the betterment of his soldiers someone who wants to see his soldiers happy that is a credit to general moska in the and he's been very vocal ever since he took over leadership there's been so many developments in that line uh including you know uh, infrastructure and so many other things he is spearheading the revamp of all the infrastructure of military men including the police officers so that is a plus i like general uh, paul kagami they are, they, they are, it is equivalent of what he's doing in rwanda he has made sure that he builds this robust serious young led army in rwanda that is well trained that is um, uh, that is, that listens to their leadership, but also are paid well to ensure that they are happy with doing the job that they are doing, and they are also, you know, uh, uh, following the trend of what Uganda has been known for for having a great, a great uh, foreign policy, where uh, the country uh, exports its forces to go and restore peace in areas that are war ravaged or are in um, some sort of turbulences so we've seen rwanda also expecting exporting its army to different uh, uh, countries in south sub-saharan africa but also other countries so he's been able to develop a very very robust uh, professional army and to an extent that now it is rwanda is also starting to be looked at as one of the safest countries in Africa. If that is true or not, it is a topic of discussion of another day. So, the blueprint uh, of Rwanda is taken from Uganda. Now, when it comes to the army and how it is run, and the other way, the blueprint of leadership of General Mohoz Kainerugaba is seemingly being taken from Kagame, whom he calls, by the way, his uncle. I don't know if they actually have that relation that he should be able to, but I think it is uncle per se that when someone is older than you and you respect them, you give them, by in, in African setup, you give them that kind of title. Maybe that could be. If they have a real relation, I am not sure about that. So, if General Mohoz Kainerugaba looks up to Paul Kagame as a blueprint for his leadership, then it means he's going to walk in his first steps. So we're basically going to see a more professional and profound army. We're going to see development in the city if that is in the case, you know, General Mohoz Kainerugaba becomes the next president of Uganda, which he has constantly said that when General Seveni is no longer the president of Uganda, he is going to be the president. That any time X, he is going to be the next president of Uganda, no doubt. Whether it is 2026, whether it is 2032, whichever year he says, he's going to be the next president of Uganda. So, him getting a blueprint from Kagame is that we expect a shrewd, uh, serious leadership. The levels of corruption in Rwanda are really, really low. There's no country that doesn't have corruption. But this tendency of literally stealing literally everything in the coffers of the government and leaving people in sheer poverty do not exist in Rwanda. So if Mohozka um, in Ugaba borrows that blueprint, then it is going to work for him regardless of what people say or not. 
we've seen uh, some 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 elements of this recently in uh, general mohozka in Rugaba. now you remember there is a time when people were complaining about um, government people people who work with the state house the soldiers and all that who misuse the roads okay there is a lot of jam now because someone works with the government and is driving a ug they come and use a one way or they ride on the pavement or they do all sorts of things making noise for people to leave the roads for them to to make way for them which we know is only left for top leadership in the army and the president maybe so General Mohoz came out really, really strong about this and said that if any person is caught, you know, in this, uh, breaking rules on the road because they are in uh, connected in government or they are in military leadership, they are going to face it rough. And as soon as he said that, that was an immediate change. All people, all government cars, all soldiers could be seen in the same lane with civilians on the road and that was a plus so that is a kind of leadership that we expect that is kind of related to what they say paul kagame is that strictness also he is someone general mohoska in Rwaba, is someone who does not tolerate corruption at all okay we've seen him let his people be taken to prison his close friends like mawanda who is uh, uh, one of the top leaders in his pressure group of uh, PLU, but he's been able to let him go to prison to be able to face the law in order for sanity to return. So he's known for being a man who does not tolerate corruption. And if he becomes president, it is something that we hope that we, he will take on serious and make sure that Uganda returns to normalcy because you, there is a lot of corruption that has been going on in Uganda where people steal public funds and sometimes go scot free. Sometimes if they if they go to prison, they still don't. You know, I see a leadership where if you're caught in a corruption tendency, you're going to pay for it one by going to prison, but also uh, your assets being seized for the government to be able to recover whatever you've been. Uh, stealing that is the kind of leadership that i see in muhozga in Rugaba, and that is the kind of leadership that is in kagame you know there's no corruption in kagame's government it is dead yes but it as it is at a very very small percentage because they know when someone is caught in that you're imprisoned for years that your family will regret and yourself but also your assets are seized to recover the money so if this works in tandem if this uh, if general mohoska in Edugaba borrows that or uses that strategy then it is going to work for him recently there's been a standoff between the government of uganda and the government of the united states of, of america and people might not have known but there is that grudge that has been going on, especially when it comes to the government of the U.S. through their embassy in Uganda, meddling in the politics of Uganda. Okay, so General Mohozka in Rugawa took on his Twitter and called on the ambassador of the United States of America in Uganda, William Pope, to apologize to the person of the president, to apologize to Yoe Kagutam Seveni for infringing in the politics of Uganda. But also this created a lot of anxiety, it created a lot of talk, both local and international. But it shows you the kind of leader that General Mohozi Kanyarugaba is going to be. A leader that, you know, does not fear. A leader that stands on his word. A leader that is going to be accountable to his people we've seen kagame use exactly this in rwanda he has gone uh, full throttle heads on with the journalists from the united states of america or the uk or you know or the journalists of the world of the west who have always looked for those loop loopholes in his government saying how dictatorial he is saying how he does not respect human rights and you know that is attendance with the western world what does not 
work for them will always be bad. But when they practice the same, their, theirs is, is, you know, is overshadowed. For example, the death of Floyd, uh, Floyd uh, Black Man who was killed, it was, you know, overshadowed. And that was one of the most world spoken about human rights abuse that was, you know, uh, done by the law enforcement. But if such a thing happens in Africa, they rush to impose sanctions, they rush to call the government's dictatorial without knowing that three fingers are pointing at them. So, back to our uh, topic, back to our line of discussion, I see a Kagame in Mohozi Kainodugawa where we're going to see a clean city. This nonsense of being you know, rowdy and a disorganized kind of city will stop because there will be strict channels of leadership, there will be strict ways of doing things. You will not be seeing such loopholes in town. Even when he's not the president, we've seen him through working with the gov with the army trying to 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 uh ensure that the portholes in the city are worked upon he you know ordered the engineering brigade of the army to give a helping hand to the KCC to ensure that portholes in the city are dealt with and we've seen that working so if he takes the same spirit to his leadership then it is going to take him to greater heights we have seen his international policy meeting different leaders across africa across asia across europe for him to solidify his uh, foreign policy and that is very key in the leadership of this country we know uganda is a country that believes in exporting of uh, support in terms of military to other countries that are in need. Uganda has been in Chad, Uganda is in Samoa, Somalia, Uganda is um, is in uh, has been in South Sudan, Uganda has been in different countries to restore normalcy. So the leadership that believes in that is a leadership that people are going to go for that will be given support are like what Paul Kagame does with his army exporting, you know, uh, they are uh, extending their arm to other different countries. So, um, I believe it is going to be very key in his leadership in case he becomes the next president of Uganda. Rwanda is known to be one of the most rapid developing countries in Africa, but also one creating one of the cleanest cities in Africa. Chigadi is known for being one, if not the cleanest city in Africa. And this has been something intended to be done because of the leadership of Paul Kagame. You know, sometimes you get people telling you that in Rwanda there are particular places where the style of building houses or infrastructure, the style of infrastructure is the same. When you're going to build a house, let's say in Kololo, it has to be a particular type of a house. You don't bring a random house and or a, a random building and just put it there. It has to be particular type. So that's why you find them organized. The streets are organized. Everything is organized. I know in Uganda it could be hard to achieve in a very, very short, limited time. It will take 10 or 15 years. But under the leadership of Mohoz, I am thinking we're going to see a very organized, restructured uh, Kampala, a very clean and robust Kampala where people are free and able to enjoy their city. And this is a blueprint that is basically going to, you know, he's just going to basically have a blueprint of what it is in Shigali in Uganda. Believe me, you. So, our question is Is General Mohozka in Lugaba the Kagame that Uganda needs to evolve? And a, a leader that is, you know, General Yoel Kabutam 7 without you know, downplaying what he has achieved for this country. It's tremendous. You know, he has done a lot of this country. We know by the time he took over, Uganda was in turmoil, Uganda was in turbulence and known of wars. Rebels were in different, you know, um, areas of this country and they've been defeated. So he has done a great job. But there's areas that still need 
to be developed and these are areas that be, I believe General Mohs Kainerugaba is going to attack. For Uganda to develop, we need an outright dictator. Yes, I know Mohs is not that. He's not an out, he is not an outright dictator, neither will he be. But for Uganda to develop, that's what we would need. You need a Kagame to be able to develop. Museveni, President Yuan Museveni is a very lenient man. He handles people with this father love. He handles them as though he is their parent, giving them pardons ever and ever again. That's why people are doing so many atrocious things, you know, running the country into uh, dates, uh, being corrupt day in, day out, stealing people's public funds. Because they know at the end of the day, they have a father who is going to handle them as children. So, for Uganda to develop, you need someone who will zero tolerate corruption. And that is what Kagame is. And that is something that you can see in General Mosca in Erugaba. He might not be an outright dictator. He's not. You see, he's a very calm, uh, intelligent, humble man. But he is not going to tolerate corruption the way it has been tolerated in this government. Not in a wrong way, but you see there's been high level of lenience from this government towards people that are corrupt, towards people that are, you know, that, are, that, are, that have gone on to carry out impunity. So many things, people that have you know, done so very many bad things to this government, but have been tolerated. That is not something that you're going to find in the government of Mohoz Kanerugaba. If he becomes president, you will call him a dictator, you will call him all sorts of things, but that is a necessary evil that we should have. That is someone that we all look up to, to be able to move this country from one level to another. Don't tolerate someone who is corrupt. If you steal government court funds, you go immediately to prison and all your assets are confiscated. If you carry out any sort of impunity, you want to be on the road and, you know, drive in a one way when people are stuck in jam, you be called to order. But I see people calling General Kagame the dictator. In Rwanda. People in Rwanda call him a dictator. Some of them, not all of them, but also the neighboring countries. They say their style of, his style of leadership is dictatorial. But that dictatorial tendency that they see in Paul Kagame has helped the country to grow at a very rapid speed and soon or later it is going to overtake so many countries in Africa. In the leadership of General Mohozika in Elugaba, there's one thing that you will surely expect. You will expect a reduced parliament. This tendency of having 500 plus members of parliament where every district has like three or two or how many representatives is going to end. In Rwanda, they only have 106 members of parliament. Yes, you may discuss, you may argue that Rwanda is small. Yes, it is small, but you see the ratio of uh, the members of parliament to the population is what it should be. So I want to believe that under the leadership of General Mohoska in Elugaba, we're going to see a very much reduced parliament. This parliament that is full of people who, are, who don't really carry the water but are members of parliament because the population has been fragmented is going to come to an end. Maximum 150 to 200 members of parliament. They are enough for this country because the more the members of parliament, the more the money used, the more the public funds spent on these people who have to earn high salaries, 35 million plus, but also are given cars and they are given padiems and all that. And what they do at the end of the day does not replicate. So a reduced parliament is paramount under the stewardship of of. And you can see it even in his speech when he's speaking. You see that he wants a very organized, shrinked kind of government. I hope you've been able to pick a leaf or two from this video. So if you did, please leave a comment, share, like, and subscribe above all because it helps us. It helps this channel to develop.